As Sherry said, the title of the message today is Bless Your Enemies. Love overcomes all things, all opposition. And uh, we know that if love overcomes everything, all of your opposition, then even your enemies have mm -hmm. a purpose. And so that's what we're going to be looking at today. What's the purpose of having enemies anyway? Uh, because God said in uh, Romans eight twenty eight that he turns things around. Yes, And, and so people uh, that come against you, if uh, you love God and are called according to his purpose, then he's going to turn things around. He's going to turn the evil around for your benefit. And that's what we're going to be looking at here. Uh, you can bless your enemies. And uh, I was talking with a woman a, a few days ago, and she had had a lot of uh, people come against her and say evil things about her. And, and she forgave what they did to her. But then every time uh, she saw them or thought about them, she still had those same problems and same thoughts uh, about the things that they did to her. So let me explain to you why that happens. And, and maybe something that all of us deal with that uh, when people say something about us, uh, they persecute us or, or say, even say lies about us, um, then that's like they owe a debt. They owe us a debt. And so if somebody owed you $100 or uh, uh, 100 uh, Limpera, then uh, and you forgave them, then they no longer owed you a debt. The debt would be zero, okay? But zero is a hard thing to get a hold of. And that's a reason when you think about your enemies or the people who have come against you or said lies about you or stabbed you in the ba back, that's what we say in, in this country, uh, stab you in the back, when people do evil, uh, and then they owe you a debt. But then when you forgive them, then they no longer owe you anything. And that zero is hard to uh, have a positive uh, feeling about that mm -hmm. uh, zero, that they owe you nothing anymore. And so people uh, continue to have the same problems with their enemies. They, they have forgiven them. They know they forgive them. And so they, they have to say, oh, I forgive them again. I forgive them. And, and there's no end to it. And so I'm going to show you a way to end that problem. And that is to bless your enemies. And let me give you an example. Um, uh, let's say about eight or 10 years ago, our daughter, I guess 10 years ago, our daughter um, uh, and her husband divorced. And uh, they went before a judge and, and everything was fine. They, they were divorced. And then uh, uh, our daughter, because of her job, it took her out of state. And so then the complications <laughs> about having a child, and that's our granddaughter, uh, there were complications that were not resolved in the divorce that needed to be resolved. And so uh, we went to a, a mediator and uh, both sides got a, a lawyer and uh, when, before it was over with, Sherry and I determined we were going to pay the entire cost of the mediation, and we were going to bless our former son-in-law, a blessing, mm -hmm. okay? Now, there were some evil words and chaos and all of those kinds of uh, things going on, uh, but we don't just remember the zero that we have forgiven him right. uh, of the evil things that he has done and said, but we have a blessing. We blessed him, mm -hmm. and we know the amount of money that we paid uh, to clear up that mediation and clear up all of those details around surrounding the divorce. And, uh, and so we can think about the blessing. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's important. And, and people who are having trouble forgiving someone uh, for doing something evil to them, uh, and, and, but yet they still have the same old feelings uh, coming back uh, the first uh, when the uh, problem occurred and then it continues to have the same feeling toward those problems. It's because you haven't blessed your enemies. 
Uh, Jesus mm -hmm. made it very clear. He said, bless your enemies. Amen. Bless those who uh, persecute you and speak all manner of evil against you. Love them. And so what is the benefit of the, of the uh, blessing? Well, because, see, if the enemy comes, God is not wanting you to be overcome or overpowered by the enemy. He wants to give you a way out, a way out to empower you with his love. Mm -hmm. And it's his love that's going to enable you to overcome your enemies. Uh, Jesus said, love your enemies. Bless those who persecute you. And, uh, and so just the basic idea is here, there's going to, something good is going to come out of the evil that people try to bring against you when you love the Lord and are called oh, according to his purpose. And I know that you're all called according to his purpose and that you love the Lord. If you didn't love the Lord, you wouldn't be here today. And so that tells me that God wants to turn everything around, any evil that has come against you any time in your life. And we're going to show you how to do it today. We're going to discover in this study we're talking about, we're going to discover how you can bless your enemies and receive a blessing and a reward. Ooh, oh, hallelujah. You, hallelujah. Your, your enemies can be a blessing mm. to you and they can be a reward to you if you knew if you know how to operate and that's what we did with our uh, former son-in-law we knew that we were going to be uh, involved with him for the rest of our lives uh, even though our daughter and he were um, not married anymore divorced and they were not married but we there is a, a granddaughter involved in the situation and so we have to keep our hearts open and mm, pure mm. and maintain a relationship. We have to maintain a relationship with this man and, and we can't uh, hate him. Uh, we, we've got to love him. Mm -hmm. That's just not an option. It's not an option to hate people. Right. Uh, and so I'm going to ask Sherry just to read this verse. We know that it's uh, and throughout the Gospels. Uh, Jesus taught mm -hmm. about it and all of the disciples that wrote the Gospels. I mean, they recorded what he said about it to bless our enemies, to love our enemies. And so, uh, and of course, the most uh, familiar may be uh, Matthew 5, uh, verse 44, but I, I like to read it out of Luke 6, and uh, because it tells a little bit more, some more dimensions here. And so let's read it out of Luke 6. Luke 6, 27 and 28. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, Bless those who curse you and pray for those that are abusive to you. Oh, I, I know Ooh, hallelujah. that we've all encountered things all of our lives, yeah. even as children. And uh, uh, so many people uh, keep these things uh, in their hearts. Uh, they've been wounded and they keep those wounds there and the, they never give the Lord mm -hmm. an opportunity to heal the wounded. That's even right. you know, he, he said, uh, I'll heal I've, the broken I've come to heal the broken hearted. Well, part of the things that the enemies have used against you, they have broken your heart and it's happened to all of us. Mm -hmm. There've been, mm -hmm. we've all encountered it. So the issue is not whether or not we're going to see enemies and have enemies do evil things to us. The, the, the real issue is how can we handle it? How? Can we handle it the way God wants to handle it so that everything is turned around to our advantage? You know, the Holy Spirit is come to give you an advantage and he'll show you how to use enemies mm -hmm. to your advantage. Oh, isn't that exciting? You, we all have enemies. We've all had enemies, but you can turn them to your advantage if you follow the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and do some simple things that we're going to be talking about today. So first of all, we know that it's uh, talked about throughout the Gospels, love your enemies, bless those who persecute you, who are abusive to you. But it, it, it's not just uh, what Jesus said, it's also throughout the God, throughout the Bible. And so let's look at Romans. Uh, Romans also said. Romans 12, 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Hallelujah. So blessing, that's our only option. You're right. Well, we don't have an option to uh, 
to uh, curse people to curse people or uh, be of, opposed uh, to them and do the things back to them that they did to us. I know they've done evil to you. They've done evil to me. Uh, but mm -hmm. we have a different spirit and we're supposed to go a different path. And the Holy Spirit will show us how everything can be turned around to your advantage. Now, here's another thing we ought to be aware of from uh, Job. Something that Job said himself. Taking revenge is a sin. Uh oh! Wow! 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 <laughs> Being vengeant, vengeful, uh, is a sin. We, we can't have that kind of an attitude. Oh, we want revenge here. That we know they mm -hmm. hurt us, they've harmed us, they've spoken evil of us, but we cannot take we, revenge. We cannot take revenge. It's a joke. It's a sin. Mm. Okay, read this. Job thirty-one, verses twenty-nine through thirty, and this is from the New Living Translation. Have I ever rejoiced when disaster struck my enemies or become excited when harm came their way? Question mark. No, I have never sinned by cursing anyone or by asking for revenge. Ooh, I've never sinned by Hallelujah. asking for revenge. Oh, so wow, wow, let's wow, wow. Let's put that wow. in our heart. Let's, let's file it away. Let's don't sin by asking for revenge or seeking revenge uh, from the people who have harmed us. And, and I also want us to read uh, Romans 8. Uh, Sherry, do you have 8 uh, verses 28? Verse 28. It may be after this. Here it is. And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Okay. You know, but I want to say something that I feel yeah. like the Lord just showed me is that remember in the 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 main verse of the kingdom outpouring is that in these last days that God is going to pour out of his spirit uh, upon all flesh. Well, do you know that, that that love has been poured into us by the Holy Spirit? So we've got the love of God in us to be able to, and empowered to love our enemies Hallelujah. and bless our enemies. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. I want to give you a couple of examples from the Bible about how people um, were kind to those who, to their enemies. And the first one is Joseph. Mm -hmm. Remember Joseph, uh, the young, the young man who was a dreamer. And this is back in Genesis uh and of course, his uh, story started earlier, but he was sold by his brothers. He, he told his brothers of his dreams and uh, they were very upset at him and very mad. They were jealous and they threw him in a pit and he wound up in slavery in Egypt. Then out of slavery, he went to uh, the prison. So he became a prisoner. And eventually he became a ruler in, in Egypt. And, uh, so in 45, he, he's, he was kind to his brothers. Mm -hmm. And he said, come close to me. I'm going mm -hmm. to be kind to you. You meant evil towards me, but I'm going mm -hmm. to be kind to you. And I, I'm going to take care of you. And I'm going to put you in Goshen. And I'm going to give you this good land. And you'll be able to um, raise your flocks there in Goshen. It's a, a wonderful place. And so he could have been very evil. Uh, towards his uh, brothers. Revengeful. Very vengeful because uh, of the evil that they did. For years, see, he had been separated from his family because his brothers were jealous against him and sold him into slavery. And it was only uh, when there was a great drought, uh, famine in the land, and there was going to be for seven years, but it had been for two years. And they had come and, and received grain from his storehouses. And so he said, I'm going to, there's going to be, there's already been two years of famine, but there's going to be five more years, but I'm going to take care of you. And, and I love what he said in Genesis uh, 50 verse 20. This turns things around. Look, look at what he said. As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for my good in order to bring about this present result to keep many people 
alive. Okay. He, he Hallelujah. Said, what you meant was evil, but God meant it for good. That's the turnaround. Oh, hallelujah. People mean to do evil uh, concerning you, but God will turn it around for those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And that's Amen. what we're looking Amen. at today, the turnaround. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, how, hallelujah. How we can turn this around. And we see Joseph's example. And he was kind to his brothers, the ones who sold him into slavery. Now, you may not have enemies like that. But those were, that was really severe. That They sold him mm -hmm. into slavery. He was separated from his homeland, from his family uh, for years. Uh, but what, what Joseph said in uh, Genesis 45, 8, I love this verse. This is one of my favorite verses. He, uh, he, he said, you didn't send me here, but God sent me here. And he made me a father to Pharaoh, Pharaoh. Lord of his household, and ruler mm -hmm. over all the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Can you imagine? He was blessed. He was blessed because he kept that good attitude. He, His integrity toward the Lord. He kept a relationship with the Lord. See, that's when we get in a bad shape. If we lose our integrity and, and we want revenge when people do evil to us. And, and, but Joseph, he kept a good heart and he showed kindness to those very ones who sold him into slavery. That is an amazing story, an amazing turnaround. But regardless of whatever you've gone through, uh, God will turn it around for your good. Amen. Uh, Amen. They meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And so that's Hallelujah. the reason I said Hallelujah. Yeah, you can take uh, the enemies that come against you and you can turn it uh, to good. But we've got to keep our heart. It's a matter of keeping our heart pure towards that's God, right. keeping our relationship don't ever let bitterness get in there or unforgiveness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and again, it's not just enough to forgive, but we need to go beyond Forgiving. that point, just beyond forgive and bless them. Mm -hmm. Bless mm -hmm. them. See, mm -hmm. if, if we all we do is forgive them, okay, we, we say today we forgive them and then we encounter them tomorrow. All we remember is that uh, they owe us no debt, but we have not, any, we don't have anything precious. To hold on to. That's right. But if you bless them, see, you can remember the blessing instead of the harm that they did to you. Just like my former son-in-law, we we put mm -hmm. out that money, and it was expensive uh, to mediate uh, that with and bring in lawyers, and we paid uh, the cost of that mediation. But that was the blessing. That's something we could remember. That that's we right. Invested. We remember it today. We remember. That's right. I'm telling you, we invested in the in the lives. Uh, in uh, the life of our former son-in-law because we wanted a relationship for the rest of our life. Uh, he's involved with our granddaughter's life. And Amen. So he's involved with Amen. Our life. She's going to graduate in a few days and uh, he may be there and I hope he is. It's a big uh, event. Uh, for her. For her and it's a big, it should be a big event in his life as well. And we don't want to have ill feelings as we travel there uh, for graduation and think, oh, I hope he's not coming. I hope he's not. No, we've got, we, we have something we can hold on precious that we invested in him a blessing. That's what a blessing is. Amen. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a monetary blessing. It could be, you could uh, do something nice for somebody or you could write out a blessing for them. And then when you see them, okay, you, for, you forgive them today and you write down that blessing. And tomorrow when you see them, uh, rather than getting upset of what they did, you remember the blessing. You remember the blessing that you uh, gave them. Amen. Isn't Amen. that interesting? And pray for them. See, that's what Jesus said. That's right. Pray for them. So you have something precious you can hold on to. I bless them and I'm praying for them. Uh, and so I'm speaking this over them. And, and so we have something precious that we can hold on to. And we're not remembering the evil that was done because there's been a turnaround. Now the Lord is turning around what Amen. the enemy meant for evil. He turns it to good. Just like Joseph said there. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. I mean, now, there's yeah. another example in the Bible. Uh, I want to uh, 
uh, mentioned, and that is David. He, yeah. You know, he he was the uh, son-in-law of uh, Saul, and he trained in the courts of Saul uh, to be king and to be a commander of the armies. And uh, But Saul got to the point where he hated him. He was jealous. Here's the jealousy again. See just how evil mm -hmm. jealousy is? Uh, well, well, let me say this. There, there are some of you that are on this, this session today and that when you have, you, um, you set back, but now you're moving forward and you're, uh, al allowing that anointing, uh, to come out. Uh, there will be those that you encounter that are jealous of that anointing. They're jealous of your moving forward, uh, with the Lord. As long as you sat back and you didn't say anything and you didn't do anything, then they they were perfectly fine. Uh, but and this is what Brother Fred is fixing to give uh, an example, biblical example of what I'm I'm speaking uh, to you about right now. Okay, okay. so so Saul, uh, you know, got jealous of David because the the women were singing. And they're saying, oh, Saul's killed his uh, hundreds, but David has killed his, his thousands. thousands. Oh, hallelujah. So Saul, the king, he got jealous of David. And what did he try, try to do? He tried to kill him a mm -hmm. number of times, mm -hmm. threw a spear at him. And, and even at times, uh, David would be there playing on his mm -hmm. harp, uh, just uh, uh, getting the evil spirits on Saul to quieten down. And Saul would throw a spear and try to kill him, and, and eventually he had to just run away. So he was persecuted mm -hmm. uh, by somebody uh, that he shouldn't have been persecuted by, and he hadn't done anything evil, but jealousy uh, rose up in the matter, and Saul tried to kill him. Well, I hope that your enemies haven't tried to kill yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean. But if they do, we've got to do <laughs> what God tells us to do. And that is, we've got to love our enemies Woo! and bless them. Amen. So there's a good example. So what David did, uh, eventually he became king, and Saul was dead, and even mm -hmm. his good friend Jonathan was dead. And But uh, David said in Second uh, Samuel 9, he, he said, Is there anybody remaining of the household of Saul because I want to bless them? And they said, well, there's one one person remaining, and that's Mephibosheth. And so he said, okay, bring him here. I want I want uh, to bless him. And so uh, when he spoke to him, and this is Second Samuel nine, he, he said, you're I, I'm going to restore all of the lands that belong to your grandfather Saul. Oh, I'm going to restore. Hallelujah. This is a blessing. This is a blessing. This is a man that tried to kill him. Now he he searches out and finds this grandson of Saul. He said, I'm going to restore all the property back to you. Mm, it's amazing. But, but I want you to eat dinner with me every day. You you eat at my table. Mm, oh, wow. Mm, Can you imagine? Mm, mm. Now, you just think about the enemies that you've had. And do you, do you want to, to eat lunch with them every oh, day? Hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Come to my house and have lunch. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's why David, David had the heart of God. Oh, hallelujah. You oh, need God, the God, heart God, of God. God. And the heart of God is I have the bless. heart of God. Sherry's got the heart of God, and I'm going to see it one of these days. Bless you. Bless your enemies. Eat lunch with them every day. Have them come over and cook lunch. That's a blessing. That's loving your enemies. Oh, hallelujah. David had the heart of God, mm -hmm. and he was blessing his enemy. Mm -hmm. And he could well have said, oh, I'm glad Saul's dead, and and uh, I'm glad he's lost all his property. But no, he said, I'm going to restore back to this grandson of Saul everything, all of the property that belonged to his grandfather, and I'm going to eat meals with him, all the meals. He's going to eat at my table. I don't want him to be out there. Uh, taking care of the property. I want him here eating with me. Woo Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. Are you are you ready to treat your enemies oh, like wow. David? Yes. That's the very heart of God. Hallelujah. And to say, okay, come on over and I'm going to uh, fix uh, meals for you. You just you just come here and I'm going to pay for all the meals and I'm going to fix all the meals and I want you to eat with me. I want you to be right here with me. Oh, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That's that's a pretty high level 
uh, following the, following the heart of God. And uh, okay, so I've given you some historical, uh, biblical examples then of why we should do it. And I want to just give a personal e example uh, that when uh, for, for years I was a professor at the university, but then I became a department head. And so as a department head, and uh, I, I was that for 10 years. And so I hired a lot of people. I fired a lot of people. I, I promoted people. I, I determined their salaries for uh, over a 10 year period. And that's basically the income that they had. Uh, I was the one that determining it by based on their performance. Okay. So, my goal in that 10 year period, I had uh, about 100 people working for me in different cities. And uh, my goal was to do what was best for the overall organization. Uh, but every one of those people had their own agendas and had their own uh, ideas about what would be best for them. So they all mm -hmm. had self interest. And I tried to have a view of what is best for. The whole department. For the whole uh, organization. And, and so often I would come into conflict with them. And so I'd make a decision that was not in their best interest. Uh, but I was trying to do what was in the best interest of the organization. And so some of them became my enemies. And they, they got very mad at me. And they threatened to take me to court. And lots and lots of different things. And, and, and that was a time that God took me to a higher level of love. See, when you've got a lot of enemies, mm. you've got a lot of opportunities to love. Ooh, hallelujah. <laughs> now, it's one thing. Pour out your love, Lord. It's one thing to sit back in your house and um, be around in your church group and mm -hmm, be around people mm -hmm. that you love and they love you. And But but when you're out there in the world and, and you're, <laughs> you're making decisions that cause people to hate you, and they come against you, then a lot of it, this is an opportunity for you to grow in love. And God will pour it out. Oh, hallelujah, pour, pour out. out love. This is a time I learned to walk in love at a higher level than I had. I, I, I'd learned to walk in love uh, at one level just by being around people I loved and they loved me. And uh, we talked about love and that was one level. But then the next level of uh, love for me was when we started reaching out, uh, reaching out to, to children in low homeless. income areas and the homeless people and people in drug, ha drug ha rehabilitation facilities and in uh, prisons and jails. When we started reaching out to unlovely people, that was, I, God took me to a higher level. Mm, hallelujah. Put more love in my heart, but it's a supernatural love. You need supernatural love. You don't need so much uh, supernatural love if you're just around people who uh, you love and they love you. But when you're getting around people who are unlovely, then you need a, a higher level, a level of, of supernatural, unconditional love. And then when you've got a lot of enemies around you, uh, like I had, you need to go to a higher level. Mm -hmm. God, that's exactly what God will do if you keep your heart pure yes. a, a, and have a heart to follow God then he'll take you to a higher level of love. And that's what he did to me. Mm. And so these are, th these are different levels that we can go to higher levels of love. Uh, but it it's needed because you know, your faith is energized by your by love. love. By Amen. love. So how much love am I in the Woo! first level of love? Or do I have a higher level of love or do I have a supernatural love? Uh, then your faith is going to be energized mm. to a higher mm. level. So that's a good reason. Uh, to pursue this love walk and, and to be receive the outpouring, hallelujah, where God wants you to be. And then the, I'm going to finish with talking about four different benefits of uh, loving your enemies and blessing your enemies. And, and the first one is you get some, there are four things that you get from this. And the first one is help. You get help. Mm -hmm. oh, that's Hallelujah. Why, why would we want to bless our enemies? Because God You're gonna will help, get help you. <laughs> God will help you. Woo! If, if your goal is to bless your enemies, God will we'll help, help you. you. Hallelujah. He's going to empower you with his love. And I want you to read this. This is in Proverbs. Proverbs 20, uh, verse 22. It says, do not say, I will repay evil. Wait for the Lord 
and he will help you. Hallelujah. So here's the first benefit then, of blessing your enemies, and God will help you do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And here's the second one. He's going to give you peace in doing it. Yeah, Proverbs 16, 7. When a person's ways are pleasing to the Lord, he causes even his enemies to make peace with him. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. So you can expect something. If you have this attitude, I'm going to bless my enemies, you can expect God to help you. You can expect God to give you peace. And so you're not going to Hallelujah. be in this turmoil. Hallelujah. Okay, I've got enemies. They've done evil against me. Uh, so I'm just in this turmoil and I've got this bitterness. No. If you say, I'm going to bless my enemies, that's your attitude, then you know that God will give you peace in the situation. Amen. So the first, Amen. Two, the first two benefits are God F will help you, you and God will give you peace. Now, the third one, listen to this. You'll be blessed. Read this first. 1 Peter 3, 9. Don't repay evil for evil. Don't retaliate with insults when people insult you. Instead, pay them back with a blessing. That is what God has called you to do, and he will grant you his blessings. Woo! You Hallelujah. Bless them. They bless, and God blesses you. So it's not the same person. The, the same person that you bless doesn't have to come back and bless you. No, no. It's God will bless you. God will give you a blessing. If you have this attitude, you're going to bless your enemies. Well, I want you to think about this. Think about who is blessing you. Do you want that person to, to come back and bless you? And maybe they don't have very much, but, or do you want God to bless you? The God who has all the silver and all the gold and the cattle on a thousand hills. I'd much rather God be the one blessing me. Woo, just uh, think about that. Hallelujah. Think about it. Hallelujah. So if you want to be blessed, hallelujah. Let's bless our enemies. So we've covered three benefits of blessing them. God will help you. God will give you peace. God will bless you. Here's the fourth one. You will be rewarded with his favor. A reward. You get a reward. Hallelujah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hallelujah. You get a reward for blessing your enemies. Proverbs 25, 21, and 22. This is out of the Passion Translation. And if you if you do not have a passion translation, it's only in the New Testament, but it's a it's a wonderful translation uh, to read uh, the scriptures from and, and just study it's on, from. It's on the internet. It's and on it's the on the internet. Proverbs twenty five twenty one through twenty two. Is your enemy hungry? Buy him some lunch. Win him over with your kindness, your surprising generosity will awaken his consciousness and God will reward you with his favor. Oh, that's you. Hallelujah. That's why David brought uh, Saul's grandson in there and fed him all his meals. You just stay right here at my table. You eat at my table. What I have is yours. You eat with me because he knew God was going to give him a reward of God's favor. Amen. So, oh, this, these are real good reasons why we ought to bless our enemies. Well, and let's sing our chorus. Okay. We like to sing the scripture. We, you, uh, we used to do this all the time with our children. Uh, if you sing a scripture and you can put any of the scriptures, uh, to, and make a, a song out of it. And we did that with our children and it gets down deep inside of you. And this is, uh, Ephesians 4. 32, be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake has forgiven you. Sing that again, Jerry. You just be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God. For Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Hallelujah. 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 So I what I want you to see from this message today is there are great benefits from your following the Lord and doing what he said. Amen. And that is blessing your enemies. Hallelujah. You might think, Hallelujah. oh, it's real hard to do. 
but it's the way to go. Amen. Because God Amen. wants to turn it around, just like he did for David. Mm -mm -mm. He wants to turn it around. Amen. And, and he you. turned it around for Joseph. And hallelujah. For Joseph. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. They meant what they meant for evil, God meant it for good. Amen. And, and you just think about you, the evil that people have done to you, that it can be turned around to your good so that you can have God's help, his peace, his blessings, and his reward. Thank you for being here. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. You know, and even the very, one of the very last things that Jesus said after they nailed him to the cross, they put the nails in his hands, the nails in his feet, the piercing in his side, the stripes on his back, the crown of thorns on his head. What did he say? He looked down and he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. And that is powerful. It will empower you if you bless your enemies. You will not be overpowered by the enemy, but you will be empowered, whoo, hallelujah, with God's love and God's power and God's anointing uh, to receive all of the benefits uh, that he has for us. And that last one, his favor. Oh, I want God's favor upon my life. You know, when you have God's favor upon your life, then then you've got you've got everything. You've got healing in your body. You've got uh, mental stability. Uh, you don't have to go through anxiety. You don't have to go through depression anymore. You don't have to go through sickness anymore. You don't have to go through poverty anymore. Hallelujah. And, and so I believe that this message is, I don't know if it's empowered you, but uh, it's empowered me. And, uh, and I, you know, I told Freddie earlier, I said, I, I have the love of God in my heart, down in my heart. Hallelujah. I've got that love and he wants us to pour it out on, on ourselves. He wants it to pour out on other people. And so right now, in the name of Jesus, and I'm going to uh, just impart, uh, I'm going to put it back on gallery so I can see all of your faces, those of you that, that I can see your faces. This is a wonderful, wonderful group here today. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I want you just to lift your hands, and I want you to just to say with me, Father... Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I receive more of your love. I receive more of your love right now, right now. Pour it into me, pour it into me in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Receive that. Yes, Lord. Receive it. Those of you that are sick in your body, receive healing right now. Yes. Hallelujah. Receive healing in your digestive uh, track. Receive healing in your hip area. Receive healing in your in your tonsils, in your throat. Uh, receive healing in your sinuses. Receive healing uh, for migraine headaches. Receive healing in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that the Lord is moving and working with this group. I see you pouring out on other people, the love of God. I see you in the workplace pouring out upon your enemies, blessing your enemies in the name of Jesus. Because some of you have enemies in the workplace. You have enemies because they're jealous of you. They see that anointing. They see that power. And there, there's that jealousy there. Uh, but in the name of Jesus, I see um, that, that root of bitterness has tried to come and and take over some of your um, internal organs, uh, your uh, your kidneys, uh, your liver. Right now, I break the hold of that um, spirit of bitterness in Jesus' name. And if that's you, and I'm not going to point you out, I'm not going to speak to to you individually. You know who you are, and so what do you do with that? You repent. You repent of that root of bitterness and it will leave you in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. I see the kidneys already starting to work again. 
Praise God, especially that right kidney. Uh, I see it begin to function in Jesus' name. 